Now, if you're struggling to hit the ball first and then the ground, it's actually your grip that could be the number one culprit. I'm gonna walk you through this interesting grip tweak that you may not be aware of at all, probably never heard before. It's gonna allow you to hit the ball first and then the, the turf. And then we're gonna really bring it home with something I call the squish and twist drill. So that's gonna help you to make sure that you hit the ball first every single time, get those divots in front and get rid of those pesky, chunked and thin golf shots. All right, so first let's start off here with the grip, as I mentioned. Well, as we come into this shot, if I'm gonna hit the ball first and then the ground, I need to have my hands leading the way. And what that means is, if you look at my club head at impact, as it was hitting the golf ball, if my hands were directly over top of that, that would be like this shaft vertical, my hands would be here. Well, that would be the low point of the swing. And the low point of the swing isn't the golf ball. That would be the bottom of the arc. The low point of the swing is the bottom of your divot. So if you want the divot in front, the hands have to be leading the way as you hit the golf ball. And then the club releases in the bottom of the divot is when the club shaft is more straight up and down this way. So I wanna make sure that I have my hands leading the way. Well, unfortunately, most people have a grip that makes this nearly impossible. And I want you to try this out. Take your normal grip, set up to the golf ball, and then go ahead and simulate an impact position. Weight left, hips open, hands in front. And what most people that I see when they do this, they do this little move to get the hands in front, but notice when I do that, watch what happens to the club face. It opens up. The club face does this little motion here, and that ball is gonna sail way out to the right. So in order to get your hands in front and hit those good clean divots, you can do that, but then you start hitting shots way over that way and you just don't wanna do it anymore because it's a terrible way to play golf. What we need to do is get this face square. Go ahead and go back to address again. Get your hands in, or weight left, so let's say about 70% of your weight on your left foot. Open up your hips about 30 or 45 degrees and then put your hands a good five or six inches in front of the golf ball. So I want my hands almost up here when my club head is at impact. And then finally, I want you to square the face. And what I want you to do here specifically is look at the leading edge of the club. And I bet you'll feel like the face is square, but when you look at that leading edge of that bottom groove on the club, it's gonna be pointing somewhere out there to the right. And when you do square up that leading edge to the target, it may feel really close to you. Now here's where the grip comes in. A lot of people have a neutral grip, meaning that this left hand is roughly flat when the leading edge of the club is facing up to the sky. Now, most players don't need to be playing this grip because when I have this neutral grip, if I get my weight left, hands in front, and I square up the face, my left wrist has to be really flat or even a little bit bowed. And that's just a tough position for most players to get into. I want you to find what's really good for you. Get in that good impact position again, square face, and then take a grip that feels comfortable to you. Where does it feel like your left hand is most relaxed and most comfortable? For me, it's right here, where the wrist is a little bit cupped even. And then on my right hand, I'm either gonna put it more underneath, meaning that it's more under this way, or more over like that. F figure out what's comfortable to you. And that's gonna be the grip that matters. That's gonna be the grip you use at impact, which is the only place that hits the golf ball, right? So let's build our grip around impact versus the other way around. I don't want you to pick your grip first and then try to make a good impact. Find good impact, take your grip that feels comfortable there, then let's go back to address. So I've done my impact grip, square face. This feels really comfortable to me. And then when I go back to address, now as I relax, I know I have the good grip. So that's the first key. I have to be able to get my hands in front if I'm gonna get the divot in front. So let's go ahead and start one out there. For most players, this may even be a little bit of a stronger, or the hands may be turned this way more than you're used to, is what I found. And if you look at great players, there's so many good players that have a grip more like that. Uh, so many, like a Sergio Garcia has his hand turned way over here like this. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything extreme to feel comfortable. Just find what's comfortable and go from there. All right, so let's go ahead and hit one here and try to get that divot in front. There we go. Hit a really nice solid shot there. I gotta tell you, I got these new Ping I-230 irons. Things are pretty sweet, 195 yards with my seven iron. Probably even a little farther than I wanna hit it. Well, when I finished there, so not only did I get that good grip, and now it was comfortable for me to get my hands in front and still get that draw. If I had a grip that was too weak, when I get my hands in front, 
again, that shot is going to kind of fly out to the right. So just keep playing around with it until you feel like you can get that face square and it's a nice, comfortable grip. Once you've done that and you've hit some semblance of some straight shots, if they keep on going to the right, meaning that if my shot keeps on going that way, go back to impact and turn the hands more this way. Get this left hand more on top. I'm really exaggerating there, but turn it this way on top of the grip like that. Turn the right hand more underneath. If the ball's going too far left, when you get in that good impact position and you're pausing, turn the hand more to the left, turn the right hand more to the left. So really use a grip for you that allows you to get in good impact position. And then when you swing with that grip, the ball flies nice and straight and test it out until you can find what's the most comfortable. Now, the second thing I did here is when I made that swing, I felt like I got my weight left and then I swung down, which for some people can be a hard uh, feeling to get. I got a couple easy tricks for you on this. So we're gonna do a squish drill, meaning that I'm gonna get my weight into my left heel. And then the twist is I'm gonna rotate, I'm gonna turn around. I'm imagining this left heel as being my pivot point of the downswing. So many times we get so focused on the ball, we hit at the golf ball and we fall back. Make this left heel your pivot point. I'm gonna squish into my left heel and then I'm gonna rotate around this like it's a post all the way into my finish. I'm gonna to try to finish with my right shoulder in front of my lead ankle. All right, so what I'm gonna to do to help get the feeling of this is grab a tennis ball. And we're gonna go ahead and set up to this shot. So go ahead and set up to a golf ball head address. Now I know where my heel should be. I'm gonna lift up my heel, put that tennis ball under there. And now all of a sudden, I can step into this and I can really feel it squish. If you don't have a tennis ball, you can put a golf ball under the left heel. It could start to hurt your heel after a while. Make sure you're on something fairly soft. If it starts to bother your heel, don't do it on there. I don't want you to get injured or hurt your, your heel and not be able to play golf. But I wanna have something that's a little bit squishy. Racquetball, golf ball, whatever you have. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a little half backswing to where my hands are just about chest high in the backswing. Before I start down, I'm gonna squish that golf ball or that, that tennis ball. This is gonna become my new post and I'm gonna rotate around this to the finish. So again, if I just remove this golf ball for a second, I'm gonna make some practice swings here. Impact, square face, got my comfortable grip. I'm gonna go back to address. Little half back swing. My weight will shift to the right during this little back swing. I'm gonna squish the tennis ball. My left leg is my new post and I'm rotating around that post to the good full finish. That will pull that divot in front every single time. Now, if you want some good feedback with this, I like to use a device like this, a little speed trap for my line golf. Basically all this does is you put the golf ball up in this gap in the front, and then when I swing, if I'm hitting behind the golf ball at all, I'm gonna smack into this piece of plastic. Uh, I love this one because you can do it right from home and make some little practice swings like this. So again, I wanna set up, imagine that my golf ball is here, half back swing, squish, and then on through to the finish, making sure that I get that right shoulder in front. Now you may be thinking, well, who cares about the right shoulder? What's that have to do with anything? If you're falling back, watch the right shoulder when I fall back. So if I do this, I fall back, now all of a sudden, the right shoulder never gets forward. If I get my weight on my left, that's my new post, then I can just swing around it. Now the last little trick here, the more left you get, the tendency is gonna to be to be more over the top, to be more of a fade by a swing. Really feel like when you're coming down, you're coming from the inside, your hands and arms are coming from the inside, letting that club swing out to the right. That's gonna guarantee that when you do this, not only do you get that divot in front, but you have that nice tight draw as it's happening. So let's go over the drill again. Good impact position, halfway back, squish, turn on through until my right shoulder is in front. Now, once you've done about 10 or 15 of those, we don't actually hit golf balls with the tennis ball there. We're just gonna put a golf ball here in front of my speed trap. I'm gonna set up to it. A little bump to get to impact hands in front. Then I'm gonna squish and turn, trying to get my hands back in front when I get to impact. Let's give it a whirl. There we go. Nice little draw. Again, 190 with the seven iron, pretty impressed with that. These feel pretty nice. Now, you don't have to have this speed trap. You can use a piece of a towel or something like that, but this is good for so many more drills. If you want one of these, go ahead and click the link down below. 
We should see one in the description or on the bottom of this page. Uh, you click a link there. I get a few bucks if you buy one from, from there. Again, you don't have to have it, but if you do, support the channel and support some more great videos. Now, one thing that makes this really tough is if we start down in the downswing the wrong way. So if I start my downswing and I get this club steep, or what I call the bell position or the ringing the bell position. So I pull my hands down as though I'm ringing a giant bell. If this club gets steep. I'm pretty much behind the eight ball there because when I do that, that yanking the club down, now the shaft is steep, it's already over the top. We can't get it from the inside like we just talked about. And yes, we may get this divot in front, but it's gonna be kind of a choppy, weak fade. We definitely won't be hitting those 190 yards, seven irons like I was lucky enough to hit there. I wanna solve this for you. I have a video that's gonna walk you through exactly what to do to get out of that and stop that steep downswing. I'm gonna play a preview of that here in just one second. All you need to do is go ahead and click the card that pops up on your screen. If you don't see that card, don't worry. Go down to the link below in the description. You'll get instant access to the video from there. I can't wait to get this ring in the bell move out of your golf game, get you to shallow the club out. Let's get started right now. Now the bottom line is that if you pull this club down to ring that bell or pull the hands more from the inside, what's gonna happen is you start to rush your downswing from that pulling and that can throw off your sequence. And we all know that once your sequence gets off, that is gonna be the root cause of all your problems. Now, maybe you're being out driven way too often or you're terribly inconsistent with your strikes. Some of your shots are heavy, some of them are thin, some of them are off the toe, and then the next ones are way off the heel. Now you end up way over in the trees, you're in the tall grass, or maybe even the hazards all day long, and it really comes down to this. Clay, how in the heck do we fix it? Well, there's some good news. Well, there's only two things that you need to learn. First, you need to learn to shallow the club rather than pulling the hands down and getting the shaft in the steep position. You see, there's another way that the pros do this, and once you start to get that club on the shallower plane, more from the inside, then you pair that up with the right way to square the club face. And once you put these two things together, everything starts to fit in your swing. Now your buddies will start to get a little bit jealous because you'll start hitting solid, longer drives, time after time, and round after round. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the E-slot technique. Let's walk through exactly how to do it. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and take a swing to the top and get in a really good position. I want you to feel like your weight is mostly shifted to your right side and that your hips and shoulders are nice and free. I don't wanna be locked up here. I want my knees to move, my hips to move. And that's gonna allow me to swing my shoulders very nicely. Now, one thing that most people get wrong when they swing to the top is they don't get this tilt away from the target. So instead of being straight up and down or leaning to the left, I wanna be slightly tilted away in what I call the stable fluid spine in my top speed golf system. Okay, so now that you're at this great position at the top of the swing, what I want you to do is instead of pulling those arms straight down or ringing the bell, that's gonna get the club shaft steep and get this elbow kind of flapping behind your body. I want you to do something very specific. I want you to take the tip of your elbow and move it in a specific way. Now, not this small bone on the inside of your elbow, but I want it to be right here at the tip. And here's what I want you to do. 